Hello, welcome back to RDLP. I'm your host, the Prince of Plays, Solon. We're playing 999, where we last left off on El Numero Nueve Tres Tiempos. Uh, we, we left off on 999, the video game. We uh, were hanging out in a hospital room, hanging out in the operation room, playing operation, gathering all the body parts that we can. We gathered every body part for a female mannequin. And now we're just going to play switcheroo between all the body parts on both the mannequins that are in the room. That's the puzzle. That's the puzzle somehow that's going to escape us out of this room. I don't really haven't put that part together. Um, but hey, it's worked every other time. So why wouldn't this obvious puzzle work this time? Before we get to that, though, I'm here to hang out with Seven. We asked it last episode. Hey, what's the deal with Seven? It's our time. This is our time. This is... This is time to get down and dirty with Seven, so show me the yeah, info. I got curious about it. Here. Is that a medicine bottle in your hands? Are you doing drugs? In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Jumpy. He caught it and twisted it around and read the label. Ethylene diet EDT! That's toothpaste. Yeah, that's right. No, it's that's EDT. not toothpaste. It's e ya old the old EDT. Ethylene diamine tartrate. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. I think it's a uh, worm. I think it's dewormer for dogs. I don't know, but it tastes great. <laughs> it's not medicine. Why don't they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. To clean up blood. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Swears seven. Swears. Sorry, let me put myself away. You've seen way too much of me already in this episode. Uh, ethylene diamine tartrate. And the F word. It looks like it's cleaned my brain up. He said a fucking bad word right in front of us. Have you been drinking detergent? You remember something? Yeah. Ah, Seven! Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> All right, buddy. Here we go. They were making it to sell as an industrial He didn't remember cream. something about himself. He remembered an anecdote about uh, manufacturing in the 1950s. But a year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Did they start resonating with other crystals? Because we were over this. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once the crystals turned into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. Yep. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT. <laughs> we so called it. We so called it. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. What does this mean for us? What does all of this mean for us? We have played one nonary game. It had some kind of conclusion. Does that mean it's going to affect all of the other nonary games? Why is this idea of mimetic information that, that happens chemically, psychologically, um, this idea of, of, of some kind of penetrating force that once it affects one thing, it, it jumps to affecting a bunch of other things. What is this, like, rhizomatic kind of weird effect that is happening here? Because uh, we keep seeing this. We keep seeing this idea of the meme infecting or affecting all other things of the same type. Now it now it's now it's chemicals in this American factory. Last time it was psychological effect um, with with the test subjects between Europe and Africa. Um, it's a lot happening here. What does that mean for nine dudes now eight dudes all dying on a ship together in a nonary game? What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> Cause they're really hammering this home and it can't be a coincidence they've been making crystals the same way with the same materials and the same equipment yes seven yeah, yeah yeah no have you ever heard of ice nine but now all of a sudden every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate 
I wouldn't give too much credence to these anecdotes. I don't know if they're real or not. Like, like real, real. The the gigantic and Titanic thing might be, but even that's a bit of a stretch. Even an EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just it just right. happened. No one knows why. It was like, man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another. <laughs> transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. Junpei is so over this shit. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, I've studied fungus. That's why I'm named Jumpy. This phenomena spread throughout the world, right? Seven stared at him dumbfounded. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's it exactly. But how, how did, did you, you know? know? I heard another story uh, kind of like that one. This kind of keeps happening Where? to me. In the freezer? What? Yeah, yeah, you weren't there. Yeah, you should have been there. It was great. You probably could have busted us out of there real easily. Junpei told Seven the story he'd heard from June in the freezer, in the kitchen, in the diary room, in with the candlestick, in the in the laboratory, with the noose. How one day glycerin began to crystallize, and the story of ice that wouldn't melt at room temperature. Junpei was done. Seven looked thoughtful and absentmindedly rubbed the scar on his chin. Melt at room temperature, huh? Hmm, the scar on your face, huh? Maybe that's what I'm really getting out of Seven. We both have face scars. That sounds familiar. Yeah, hold up. I, I feel like I can remember something. It's. Do you? Do you? Do you know about? Yeah, do you know about Ice Nine? This is what I've been asking you the whole time. I've been saying this the whole time. Do you know about Ice Nine? Do you know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Ice Nine. <laughs> ice Nine. Nice to meet you. Nine Ice. 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 Nine Ice sounds like a Pokemon, actually. That's it. I remember now. I remember. That woman. Everything. She's on this boat. Please say Lotus, please say Lotus, please say Lotus. Please don't say June and freak me out. That woman? Alice! Oh no. Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature. The Ice Queen. Huh? It became clear to Seven that Junpei had no idea what he was talking about. It became clear to Junpei that Junpei had no idea what was going on around him. He ran his hand across his face, took a deep breath. You know how the Titanic sank on April 15th. Are you saying the person right? that caused the Titanic to sink, to sink is on yeah, the boat? More than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. Little this, little what that. About, did you hear about the what about that it? The dead bodies? That's how. That's how I always introduce <laughs> new topics to people. Hey, have you ever heard about this? Ah, yes. This, the event that sank 15, that, that killed 1,500 people, the worst maritime accident in history. Of course. I may have heard of it. It, I, it might have occurred to me. Hey, have you ever heard, have you ever heard about, uh, have you ever heard about the Mariners baseball team? Ah, the, the ones who couldn't make it all the way. Yes. 1998? 1997, was it? Uh, I think that was the RMS. I may have heard of them. Right? Oh, all right. Let's get into some weird stuff. Yeah, everyone knows about the RMS Carpathia. Sure. It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. Wait, so they sent a Titanic out to save the Titanic? No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. Oh. Seven's like, I'm not talking about survivors. We're talking about... The bodies. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April. They 17th, pulled the two short days straw. After the accident. Is it too soon? Is that too soon? McKay Bennett's like, God, I wish... why did I have to get stuck with the McKay Bennett? Set off from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. Good job, guys. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. Mm -hmm. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? <laughs> well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. A xenomorph. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. <laughs> yeah. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. <laughs> The Just who made it must have been pretty skilled. Big old coffin. Oh, that was the coffin that we saw earlier with the gun in it. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood. No nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. 
The thing was airtight. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've heard this story before. I know this story. This was in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> this was the whole bit. The whole stupid swerving ending of the first season was this. <laughs> The main bad guy was just chilling in the the wooden coffin on the Titanic. <laughs> Dang it! No, I don't think it was the Titanic. It was like it was a ship from sent from Europe to go to America, so it couldn't have been the Titanic. But like, come on! The crew got pretty curious about what might be. This is a thing. I had to get a wedge and hammer it open. It so they hammered and wedged it open during the second season. Side. You thought it was a body, but it was me, Dio. They found a woman. Ah, D D Dio. Say they found the dead body of a woman. What? Okay, this this bullshit. I'm gonna just call that out right now. This is all. That's dumb. This her is hair silly. was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. That's Dio. She was obviously dead. But Lady Dio. Who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike she looked like she might wake up any minute. She didn't. She, okay, okay, good, good. Thanks. Spoilers! Spoilers, Seven! Wait till we get to the end of the story before you tell me she didn't wake up. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. <sighs> but only 305 bodies came back? However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the stink was horrible. Ugh, the job kept getting worse. They pull up all the dead bodies and they're like, well, that's over with. And then they get back and they start to thaw and they're like, it keeps happening. There was one body that didn't thaw. And that was... The Ice Queen. The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed she's, and nothing happened. She's probably preserved, right? And a month passed. And another. And it was summer. And she was still... Yeah, she, so she wasn't in a coffin. She was in a, like, sarcophagus. It was, it, like, they made a preserve... A self-preserving chamber. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. It doesn't seem like a miracle. It just seems like it would take longer. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. Guys, don't go to Halifax to go see the dead lady. To be fair, she's like an Egyptian princess or something. So, like, that's cool. If you were in Halifax, if you were like, ah, I gotta go to, gotta go hit up Halifax someday. I, oh, they got the, the lady while, that didn't die all the all way. Ice. Oh, all ice, Alice. Al Alice. Alice, Alice, I see. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Because it was fake. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quick. So wait, this has nothing to do with Ice Nine. You just suddenly put together Alice from Ice Nine. After a while, no one remembered her. Ugh, Might okay. be able to find something about her if you can find a newspaper from back then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. How did you get that from Ice Nine? What the hell would you say something like that? Yeah. Because I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? <sighs> Why would you know that? What kind of weird, like, fisherman gym coach are you? Slash older Phoenix Wright lawyer attorney at law all right what are you dude what happened to alice well around that time the word was that there was a special <laughs> a black market in New York. oh not all a magician just a all over the world just a, uh, an auctioneer okay I heard that alice went up for auction there the person who won the auction was abraham lincoln Dashiell gordain god dang it You've heard that name before, Lordy right? Gordia, Lord back at it again. Isn't he the guy who bought the gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Le Gigante. Yeah, that's him. Although I guess he hadn't done that yet. Because, well, he's still got lady money to burn. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought God, the Gigantic. Seven, you are impossible. He Alice somewhere on the Gigantic, but nobody knows where. He died in 1931, and apparently he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However, 
However, nobody what? thought, hey, maybe he put the spooky lady inside the giant ship that he owned. Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. That's pretty, like, pretty clear. It's on the gigantic. Go on the freaking boat. What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. We're going to go through pretty much every room in here. Send him through his hands. So that's it. That's why I'm here. I believe she's hidden somewhere on the gigantic. I'm here for um some kind of weird treasure hunt. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. You are so sure that this is the gigantic. As Junpei was trying to figure out what on earth he was going to say next, Clover's shrill voice pierced hey, the room. What are you two doing over there? Just having just some guy time. Just what's better than this? Dudes being dudes talking about ladies frozen in ice on a ship stop wasting time and get over here she's right she's right okay okay we're coming i have no idea what any of this had to do with ice nine jeez this like i was so like ready for something to make sense and i should not have been <laughs> somehow they got me again <laughs> i should know better i should know better that all of this is not going to make a lick of sense by the end of all of this. Yeah, so anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. I thought Ice Nine was going to be useful, but now I can forget that because I just used it and it meant nothing. Um, also, we totally, like, dropped the story on the weird factory? Uh, Alice. Huh. The factory that had the, like... They, they made something and started spreading everywhere, and... That mummy wasn't just a Whatever. normal mummy. <laughs> it was a b bigger mummy! It was a daddy! They say that she was frozen. Oh, that's right. June did say the same thing. Oh. I feel like an idiot. All the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta face for this. I wish I had smaller glasses, but... I need to put that drill face on for this, because we're getting played. Her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? Junpei, however you want to put it together. However you want to put this picture together, my dude. No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist. It all came together too perfectly. You solved the mystery of All Ice Alice. Can we just get out of here? Okay. So anyway, uh, it's been a second. It's been a hot minute since we got to do this. Let's just mix and match the parts, right? All right, operating instructions. The screen will display two medical mannequins. You can switch their body parts by selecting the part you want to switch out. So this is 53.5, and that's 51. And how do we find out? Wee, woo! How do we find out which ones we want? I might actually have to go back to the book and write this down. Um, the medical record. So Lucy needs to be 53.2 and Hyon, Yonsi needs to be 51.3. And so, yeah, we're back to the book, boys.